Learning Module 6, Beam Design by Elastic and Inelastic Analyses. We'll begin by defining the geometry. In this case, we'll put in the five nodes one at a time. To do that, we'll simply select Geometry, Define Node. And down at the bottom, we'll need to provide the coordinates of each node. Our first node is located at 0 in the x, 0 in the y, and 0 in the z. Hit Apply and the node's been defined. We'll now move over in the x direction to 144. Y and Z still at zero. Hit apply and node two's in. Putting in node three, its coordinates is at 216. Y zero and Z zero. Hit apply, node three's in. We can put in node four. Its X coordinate is 360. Y is zero and Z is zero. Hit apply, and node 4 is in. And then finally, we can put in node 5, which is at an x value of 468, y value 0, z value 0. Hit apply, and the five nodes are now in. We'll now define the elements. To do that, we'll go into Geometry, Define Element. We'll click on node 1, click on node 2. Down at the base, 1 and 2 have been input. Hit apply and that element's in. And then we'll continue to repeat the process. Click on node two, click on node three, hit apply, click on node three, click on node four, hit apply, click on node four, click on node five, hit apply, and our four elements have been defined. We'll now define the section and material properties. Let's start with the section properties. Under properties, Define section. In place of typing in all the numbers down below, we'll go to the AISC database by clicking database. Our first section is a W27 by 84. So we'll scroll down until we find the W27 by 84. We click on it and all the values are typed in down below. We hit apply and section one has been saved. We'll now put in section two, which is a W16 by 31. Scroll down to the 16s. Click on W16 by 31, hit apply, and section 2 has been defined. Our last section is a W18 by 35. Scroll up a bit, click on W18 by 35, hit apply, and our section properties have been defined. We'll now attach these section properties to the elements. Under Properties, select Attach Section. Our first section, 1, is a W27 by 84. We click on the first element and hit apply. We'll now clear the list, advance to the second section, which is a W16 by 31. Select the two elements in the center here, which are W16 by 31s. Hit apply, and they've been attached. Clear our list, select the third element, the third portion of the beam, advance to section three, which is a W18 by 35. Hit apply, and our section properties have now been attached to the elements. We'll now go on and define the material properties. Under Properties, select Define Material. The material we'll be using is steel, so we'll type in the name. Now, according to Appendix 1, we need to factor the E and FY by 0.9. So 0 0.9 times 29,000 is the modulus value, and the FY will be 0 0.9 times the yield strength of 50. Hit apply, and our material properties have been defined. It should be noted that because uh, second order effects are insignificant in designing continuous beams, that factor we put against E, the 0 0.9, will really have no impact on our results. We'll now attach that material property to all the elements. So we go into Properties, Attach Material, Select All, and hit Apply. We can now move on to the boundary conditions. We select Conditions, Define Fixities. In this case, the left end of our beam, we'll select that node, and the far right end of our member, select that node, are fixed. So we need to restrain X displacement, restrain Y displacement, and restrain rotation. Hit Apply, and those boundary conditions have been defined. 
We also need to define the boundary conditions along the span of the beam, which included two rollers at node 2 and node 4. We'll start by clearing the list. We'll then select node 2 and node 4 and change the conditions down below. For a roller, we'll allow the X displacement. We'll leave Y displacement restrained and we'll release the Z rotation so the members can rotate about the roller. Hit apply and our boundary conditions are defined. We can now define the force on the beam. To do that, we'll go under conditions, define forces. Now we don't know how much the beam can support. So for starters, on node three, I select node three, I'll place a negative 100 kips. Down at the bottom, PY minus 100. Hit apply and the force has been defined. The pre-processing is complete, so now we'll go in and perform an analysis. Select Analysis. We'll do a first order elastic analysis. Because we've only provided boundary conditions in the plane, the XY plane, we'll need to set the analysis type to planar frame. Hit Apply, and the analysis is complete. We can now look at the results. So we'll go into Results, Diagrams, and in this case, let's plot the major axis moment diagram, moment Z. We hit Apply, and the moment diagram is drawn. Because we performed a first order elastic analysis, these moments are directly proportional to the applied load. So in other words, if we were to go back and double that applied load from 100 to 200, all of these moments would precisely double as well. We can use this concept of scaling to determine the maximum load the beam could resist according to the AIC elastic design procedure. But now let's go back and determine what the maximum load that the beam could resist according to AIC's inelastic design procedure. To do this, we will need to perform a plastic or inelastic analysis. So let's go back under Analysis and select First Order Inelastic. Down at the base, we'll need to set the analysis parameters. We'll use a simple step. Our analysis type will need to be planar frame. We'll go with an increment size of 0.1, but we're going to run the maximum applied load ratio, say, up to 10. So we'll change that number to 10. And the maximum number of increments, each one at 0.1, will have 100. This way we'll be assured that as the frame is loaded, we'll eventually find the failure by inelastic analysis. Hit apply, and the analysis is performed. Now, a warning has come up indicating that there's been a significant change in the deformations. This is an indication that a plastic mechanism has formed. So we're going to select no, so the analysis does not continue. We can now look at the results. So under results, diagrams, and in this case, we'll plot the deflected shape. And we'll hit apply. We can now see the plastic hinge formation sequence. These triangles are plastic hinges. So at the left side of the beam, the center beam, at 77% of the load, the first plastic hinge formed. The second plastic hinge then formed at 94% of the load. And then finally, at just over the full application of the load, 1.01, .01, a third mechanism formed, at this, a third hinge formed. At this point, we have a plastic mechanism and the beam can, the system can resist no additional load. So the ultimate load on this frame, according to inelastic analysis, would be 1.01 .01 times the 100 kips we had down there, or the ultimate load would be 101.28 kips. Let's go into the moment diagram and see what happens. So under results, select diagrams, moment Z. Hit apply. What we'll do now is just step back a few steps. So down at the bottom here, I'm going to advance back to load step seven. And then hit apply. And this is the moment distribution at that step. If we advance to step eight and hit apply, we can see that the full plastic design capacity, VMP, has been reached um, at the left side of element two. 
that value being 2430. We'll now advance to the ninth load step and hit apply. So we've um, applied more load, we're up to 0.86, and what you can see is the left side remained at 2430, but the moment started to increase at the right side of element two and also at other spots along the span. We can then move forward to load step 10 and hit apply. And now we can see that two spots on element two, both ends, have achieved the design plastic capacity fee MP of 2430. We still do not have a plastic mechanism. So we'll apply one more load step and we'll be able to see that final plastic hinge form over at node four at the right end of element three. Right now, the moment's at 1410. Let's advance to step 11 and hit apply. At this point, we have three spots where the moment has reached 2430, the phi MP value for that center beam. So we would have a plastic mechanism and there is nowhere for, if we were to apply any additional force for any additional moment to be redistributed. So this would be the plastic collapse mechanism for this beam. This concludes learning module six.